Um, yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. So. Uh, to give you a really quick recap, um, the Hammer um, Parser Combinator Library, for those of you who have not ever seen it, is uh, a library um, meant to well bring bring more grammatical uh, parser specification into the world of C. So this, what you see here, is a few examples. We have pr or primitive parsers that are then combined by um, higher level combinators into more complex structures. And you can also define your own combinators uh, using those. Um, and by that, we hopefully will arrive at uh, yeah, a specification for our protocol, which is at the same time uh, kind of a grammar and uh, also its implementation. So to give you a little uh, spoiler where this is going to go, uh, this is uh, Sergey's fa favorite mantra, uh, I think. Um, start with a grammar, stay with a grammar. Uh, that's what. Uh, um, we're hoping a hammer lets us do. Um, but the question, of course, is what is that grammar, actually? For a protocol like DNP3, uh, there's a very large specification, but um, it does not contain a BNF or something. We've already heard a lot of talks about um, uh, trying to derive grammars, and that's um, something that we did here um, basically by hand. Um, and it's, uh, the interesting lesson here is if you look at the beginning of the specification, um, you don't have to be able to read the very small text there, obviously. Um, this is a, an overview picture of uh, DN the DMP3 protocol layers. It has a lower uh, link layer, a uh, transport layer, and an application layer at the top. So that's uh, basically kind of mirroring the situation you'll have in, uh, on the internet. Um, but this is meant to run over modem lines and stu such as well. So it has all these three layers. And uh, if, you, uh, if we concentrate on the application uh, layer here, uh, you'll see that it still looks pretty neat. This is still from the first pages of the spec. Um, and this is, this is a, a kind of regular expression um, uh, representation of this structure of this application layer fragment, as they call it, the packet, um, <clears throat> uh, which consi consists just of a header. And that's followed by an arbitrary number of objects blocks, so to speak, and each object block contains another object header, which specifies the type of objects, basically, and then the object data itself. Um, those can be multiple as well. Uh, the stuff below here uh, is then the detailed structure of well the header as well as the object. So, um, you'll see there are several fields. You don't obviously need to ha know the details of those, but it's, it's relatively easy to explain this structure and write down a regular expression that uh, fits it. Um, but the problem is uh, that uh, fails to capture um, the dependencies and uh, constraints that exist between the flags and the header, uh, the particular function being involved, being invoked, um, and the function and the groups, and uh, or the types, I should say, group variation is a DMP3 term, the types of the objects that are uh, expected or allowed with that function. And then also a, a bunch of more particular um, fields in that um, in that header. So these are the things that we had to somehow capture. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to look at the spec uh, for for this information, uh, you'll find a lot of uh, tables and uh, descriptions. Uh, this is a slide of uh, a screenshot of a slide that we had in the talk where we presented this uh, this year at S4 to the um, industrial control system community, so to speak. And um, yeah, there's these tables that, uh, that show valid combinations of flags. And here you see a little bit of a text snippet out of the uh, semantic sort of uh, description of some function. And if I blow that snippet up, um, sorry, I'll, I'll read that uh, red part to you. It says, uh, this is about a certain type of object. It says, read requests and responses shall use qualifier code. Uh, seven and range field value of one for this object. And uh, this object can be included in a write request. So this is uh, clearly actually syntactic information. This is the, the types of codes and flags you're supposed to use with this object type um, and the type of uh, function that you're allowed to use this with. Um, but uh, if you talk to DNP3 uh, users, 
they'll tell you, well, yes, that's, but that's semantics, right? That's in the semantics of the thing because it's in the, in the prose description of the spec. But in our view, this is not actually semantics. So uh, our job is to find uh, the true uh, uh, syntax of this protocol. Um, here's another example uh, where you have um, a structure that's for uh, basically time stamps on events. And um, to save bits on the wire, they allow you to specify these relative to some common time of occurrence. That's what the term is. And, um, there's an obvious constraint here. If you don't have a common reference point, you can't have relative timestamps. But the spec actually never says this. And the reality is that different implementations will behave differently if this, uh, this common time of occurrence object is left out of the packet. Um, so you have instances where the, where the complexity of the language uh, is kind of shifted uh, uh, out of the syntax into, into the prose uh, description, and you have cases where it's actually just not there in the description anywhere. Yes, where the fog was fresh. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah, 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 yeah. OK, um, here uh, to give you an example of uh, what this looks like in our code, uh, the top part is just uh, short names for, for the uh, for stuff, stuff that was defined el elsewhere. Um, the interesting part is here in the middle, you can see uh, two combinators use choice and sequence. Sequencing is just, you know, two things after another. Um, uh, the interesting part is there's, there's, uh, this is for the select function that selects a, a, a relay to be switched or something like that. Uh, and, it's, uh, and you can see it has uh, three possible forms. Uh, first one is uh, a sequence of a, something called a PCB followed by multiple things called a PCM. Uh, the third one is a, a thing called a crop. That's a control relay object blog or something. Uh, or, yeah. yeah, 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 the, exactly. Those are the data structures that say what, what, what are you supposed to do with this relay and how often and so on. So you have these different forms. Um, you can specify these. And then the whole uh, object data for the select request uh, is supposed to cont uh, contain, consist of many of these uh, blocks defined up here. Um, the, the point here is we can already see that this, is, this leads us to some, to some good questions about the, about the syntax, about the protocol, which are also sometimes answered in the spec and sometimes they aren't. Like, um, is it OK if we have none of these things in the select request? Um, so should this actually be a many one combinator? Uh, or is it, or maybe, is, it, uh, is the idea that you only have one of these things and have uh, uh, individual requests if you want to switch multiple relays? Uh, so those are some, some good questions that the grammatical approach already leads to. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> as a very simple application, we built a validating proxy for this uh, protocol um, where we just uh, intercept a TCP stream, uh, run it through, run both the, the uh, uh, both directions of the stream uh, through our parser and then drop anything that, uh, that isn't valid and pass anything on that is. Uh, and then we connect a fuzzer to that or something else. Um, so really simple, really basic uh, app. And um, what, what we also did for this application was to integrate that with a system called Elfbeck, um, which yeah, maybe you should do that uh, intro. Uh, Elfbeck is an intra-process memory protection system, uh, enforcing the fact that some Elf sections should only be accessing other Elf sections, but not others. And so in our case uh, for the proxy, the idea was very simple. If we do for the crash, we want to catch it, and we want to uh, isolate whatever might be um, crash and presumably taken over as via memory corruption uh, from uh, writing over the areas where uh, we don't want to write. And also we wanted to limit all of the uh, logic code from ever accessing prolog into the data because this is the job uh, for the rest of the uh, It is a Linux kernel patch uh, and uh, it exists for ARM and and uh, the x86 prototype was actually developed by 
epithelium over there, uh, and uh, the uh, arms that look like what develops by the uh, friends that have their company in the 1930s. Uh, so we hope that this thing takes in industrial computers, because the proxy that we built was on an industrial computer. We wanted uh, the industry to keep us on us, so we took uh, Adam Cray, um, I already mentioned, on board, uh, so that we could uh, ascertain that this thing was performant and would run on the same hardware that does find its way into substations. And we did. So uh, we'll uh, skip that. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it uh, uh, involved hammer as a part of the parser, obviously. And so uh, back to you. Yeah, OK, uh, fine. So one of the things that we, um, or some of the challenges we faced with this uh, Elfbeck system, um, yeah, again, uh, the idea is uh, that we separate the uh, parser logic precisely from the processing um, of, the, uh, uh, of the message. And some of the problems were that um, well, first of all, of course, your application has to be designed for this kind of separation, and we kind of did this, uh, or we, we, um, but um, yeah, we can imagine that if, 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 you, uh, if you take a previous application, it might be a little more trouble. And yeah, so what we found afterwards, or yeah, at near the end, was that uh, our uh, memory allocation from, that we did in the, uh, in the Hammer library uh, was not captured by Elfbeck because uh, it's just regular MLOX, and Elfbeck at this point at least doesn't support um, marking those as coming from a particular section. Um, so what we can do uh, with modern systems that allow you to overcommit memory or that will uh, overcommit to memory for you is we can say, oh, we'd like a very, very large section here um, and uh, just use a custom allocator to, uh, to pull from that. Uh, which Hammer allowed us to do very comfortably. Uh, we just had to implement this allocator in the first place. Um, yeah, but uh, we also found that uh, the overcommit uh, handle of Linux will sometimes get in the way because it, it, it has an, account and, uh, an accounting, um, uh, like, um, sorry, uh, yeah, accounting system that will say, oh, I've already given you this much memory. If you're going to use all that, no, um, I'm not going to give you more. Um, we actually, uh, we just want the address space. We're not so much interested in the memory itself. We just want address blocks. Uh, so it would be useful if we had a different API at that point. But yeah. All right, so uh, summing up uh, to, uh, the, how we uh, kind of validated this, implement, uh, this implementation to see if, uh, if our approach actually works. Um, First of all, we did lots of unit tests uh, during, the imp uh, during the implementation that um, also kind of validates the, um, the Langsec approach in there um, because if, if we have a parser that basically follows a the grammar, then um, it uh, naturally decomposes into uh, smaller pieces that uh, have natural unit tests. Um, so we had a lot, of, a lot of those that got uh, huge coverage of the whole parser. And uh, we also had some particular tests uh, done for common bugs in DMP3 that are, well, basically always happen. Um, then we did the typical val grind and also the uh, fuzzing with, uh, first of all, uh, AFL, American Fuzzy Lop, um, which is cover coverage based. And uh, also, Aegis is the fuzzer by Adam Crane that, uh, yeah, he famously used to crash all kinds of DMP3. Um, systems. And then uh, lastly, we ran this thing uh, uh, through different compilers as kind of a stand-in uh, for the fact that we didn't do any p uh, particular static analysis, but uh, we figured uh, compiling it with different systems would at least give us some uh, something. Anyway. Um, survive. Well, the punchline uh, for Fuzzy Lop is, uh, yeah. Uh, Where's my T-shirt? I forgot that one. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, we survived American Fuzzy Lop. Basically, uh, it, um, it it actually pointed to one uh, problem that uh, that was in Hammer uh, itself, which we subsequently fixed. Um, and uh, interestingly, this is uh, this was due to what length fields in some packets 
uh, where um, the packet says, hey, I'm containing five million objects. Hammer would allocate five, uh, try to uh, allocate uh, five million objects for, for us, and um, that would be denied. Uh, by the malloc would fall through. Um, uh, so we fixed that, so Hammer will only try to allocate, the, uh, allocate these as it, as it parses them. And the second one uh, uh, that we ran into was uh, that um, I actually did the, um, the basic integer overflow uh, mistake that was one of, the, one of the standard DMP3 bugs because they have, this, have a wonderful representation for their particular, uh, for a particular account field. So this is another uh, one of my, yeah. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite topics, uh, these length, length and count fields. Uh, so it's interesting to see that these actually caused the two, caused the two um, problems uh, we had uh, found by the fuzzer. All right. Um, yeah, and the very uh, last, uh, if we look at uh, the LangStack approach as kind of a roadmap um, towards developing of such a system, uh, we, we can sum up that uh, Thinking about a grammar and specifying a grammar and uh, deriving a parser from it is not everything, but it seems somehow it seems to help with everything. So that validates uh, validates the Langstack worldview in my uh, in my uh, in my eyes. Um, yeah, uh, like it says, uh, the parsers it leads to parsers that decompose naturally um, for testing. The code is easier to maintain, hopefully, and. Um, it also helps us with uh, separation of privileges uh, using that uh, elf back toolkit in this case. All right, um, some some downsides or uh, downsides or potential downsides. Um, I think we should uh, mention is uh, we have a potential um, impact on speed and memory consumption uh, with such a library. Where uh, in the speed case, I'd like to say. If uh, the, the current implementation in Hammer, because it's uh, because the protocol, because it uses uh, non-context-free uh, uh, combinators, uh, uses a packrat backend, and that um, uh, results in, for instance, or particularly in um, uh, these choice combinators uh, that I showed before being tried se sequentially. Every option is tried until one matches. Uh, this is, of course, not um, not as efficient as one would sometimes like, because uh, you can have uh, things where ev where simply all the functions uh, are listed in a long choice combinator, and the um, yeah the uh, the options are just tried until one number matches. Where in a real implementation, um, you'd have just a simple a table lookup. And in one case, we actually do say I think it is with the function we actually do say okay we're gonna not do it the, the context-free way here, but do a, do a table lookup. Uh, however, if it were all context-free, we could just uh, run this uh, through a context-free parser uh, generator algorithm like LLK or LALR, which we actually have in Hammer, and that would just compile this all down to a lookup table, of course. And then we'd have exactly that, uh, uh, but we could still specify it in a nice grammatical way. All right, uh, the memory impact, um, uh, there's well, this is a, a, a potential problem with uh, higher-level libraries in general. We have a very generic representation for the semantic uh, uh, semantic results of the uh, of the parse, and uh, DMP3 goes to through uh, uh, great lengths to save bits on the wire. So if we have a very tightly packed bit structure, a hammer will blow this up into big C structs. Um, so. We haven't seen any particular problems with this, but it's a potential thing to look out for. Um, and then um, one question that came up is, can we, um, can we separate, can we make separate parsers out of the same uh, uh, implementation, so to speak, uh, out of the same code that, uh, where, where one of them simply skips the semantic values? Um, like if in our part in our application, if we don't actually want to do anything with the packets, we might want to just just only recognize, and then obviously this memory problem uh, doesn't uh, appear or shouldn't appear. And in our current uh, implementation, because the library is supposed to be uh, able to use for all kinds of uh, things, uh, we always um, we always generate semantic representations. So this is an interesting, um, yeah. Direction. 